miracles and miracles. Life, life is bitter. And right in the midst of all this that we're seeing and the good reports has come back, we got another phone call from another, another close friend from ours up in South Carolina. And, and the, 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 the guy, is, is, uh, he's a bishop. He's over about 130 churches and we're very close with him. And his wife, Karen, just passed away in the middle of the week there. He's passed away just suddenly, just suddenly. I don't think it was expected. She'd go to hospital for something and something else went wrong and she didn't make it. She didn't make it through. And so you have, on the one hand, you, got, you, you get to see, we get to see things that most ministries never see. We get to see things that most people would just, if you got one of them in a lifetime, you think you're there. We get to see them on a consistent basis. And still, on the other hand, the 47-year-old woman just goes on to be with Jesus. So I don't have all the answers. I, I like you to know that. I don't have all the answers to life's equations. I'm just Joe. I'm just a simple guy. But I can't do anything for the one that went to be with Jesus. But there's tens of thousands still alive on earth that are messed up and needs us. Look at somebody say, somebody needs you. And so I got to talk to you about more signs, wonders, and miracles. I got to talk to you about your purpose. I want you on track. If, if you can just see one miracle, if you can pray one time and something happen, I tell you, it, 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 there's an excitement comes with it. There's, there's this humbling experience that God heard you and God actually answered and a life now is, is turned completely around. It's the most amazing, amazing thing. You really don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss it. I, I, I probably, you will see more in your lifetime than Laura and I will ever see. Uh, we see a lot, and you've got a, lot, you've got a lot of doing to carry up, but you'll see more than I've ever seen because you're the next generation. You'll, you'll do the things that I do, but when I'm away on, then you'll take up where I left over, and you will see not just mine, but you'll see yours on top of that. It's just the way it is. It's, it's a transfer that goes down, and so will the church. So will this church. God, God just doesn't have a minister moving mightily. He has a church that moves mightily. And so here you sit today and you don't, you, you're not sure and you're scratching your head. You've got to understand, get sure, because you're as called of God as I am. You're just as human as I am. Well, maybe you're a bit more crazy than me. But nevertheless, yes, you've got to have the charm, the good looks, and the personality, of course, and you've got to work on yourself and get cosmetic surgery and all that. But, but the rest of the stuff, when, once you get this standard, once Jesus Christ is Lord, and you find your purpose in life, you'll be one happy camper. Now, if you miss your purpose, then you've missed everything. So put that on record now, and we'll get going. All right, oh, we're ready this morning. And first of all, I'll maybe give you a reiterate two scriptures where we, no, I'll give you one where we kicked off last week, and then we'll get going. First John 3 and verse 8, talk about the Lord Jesus. It says, for this purpose, everybody shout purpose. This is part three we're on now. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, or Jesus Christ came and demonstrated who he was, what he was, and the will of God. For this purpose, Jesus Christ came to manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to let you see what is possible. He came to show you the power, the authority, the ability of the kingdom of God. But he came. And he just didn't arrive and start healing over here and walking over there. He knew exactly where he was going. In fact, his, he had a daily timetable. He would get up early in the morning and go up in the mountain and talk to his heavenly father with his clipboard and said, okay, where do you want me to go today? Who do I need to talk to today? He got every day, he got his instruction from heaven. So he just didn't get up and yawn and think, ah, oh, Capernaum looks good today. I'll go down here. Ah, when I'm here, I'll just dander on down to the seashore. No, he knew exactly where he was going. He knew when to go into a town and when not to go into a town. If you think you're not sure of that, then you take when Lazarus, who was in another town, died, and they came and said, your best friend's dead. Jesus never went. He never went until three days later. Then he said, come on, fellas, now is the time. He never went anywhere unless he had a purpose in being and a purpose in going there. You and I, most people, in fact, 90% of the people I've run with and known and taught, really have no purpose to their life. It's K, Sarah, Sarah. We'll go to work and we'll come home from work and we'll cut the lawn and we'll feed the children and we'll water the goldfish and we'll go to bed and we'll get up and go through the cycle of life. And they have no, no purpose to where they're going in five years from now and two years from now or 40 years from now. They've got no purpose in being except the education they gained on the way through or if you're not educated, whatever's go whatever you're doing, your hobbies. A lot of people get hobbies because they've got no main purpose so they pick up something else that will consume their very being. 
But we're not meant to be consumed with sidelines. It's okay to have hobbies. It's okay to do them things. But we're not meant to be consumed with that. Because while you're consumed with that, you will miss your purpose. You will be so caught up in doing this that you will miss everything that God has for you. A very famous person said this one time, A man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder. Now you can imagine if you've got a ship without a rudder, it may go places, but it'll probably go around in circles. It'll go driven by every wind. It'll just go wherever it wants to go because the rudder's the thing it steers it. And the man without purpose is like a man with no rudder. He said, listen to this, he is a no man, he is a nothing. He continued to say, so have a purpose in life. And having it through such strength of mind and muscle into your work as God has given you. We got to do that. We got to focus. We got to have purpose because your purpose will drive you in life. I, I need to tell I'm, I'm getting into this now because I've started last t- Sunday morning, Sunday night into this. And I'm in part three. But every person in this room, every person listening to this or watching this on YouTube, every person in life, is, their life is driven by something. And you have got to evaluate what is driving you. What is driving your life? Because 95% of the people that I meet are driven, all right? Everybody's driven by something. But most people are driven in the wrong direction because they're not driven by their God-given purpose. Look at somebody say, I'm driven to distraction. Did your mother ever tell you that? You drive me to distraction. Well, that's the way the enemy used. The enemy is using distractions, anything to distract you from your God-given purpose and your God-given plan. We're not even getting into this this morning about how to find your purpose. We'll probably get in there the night, hopefully. We'll see how far we'll go. But you've got to understand, when you've found your purpose, you've got focus. When you've found your, when you've found your uh, purpose, you've got vision. And it's only when you find your purpose and start heading in that direction. As long as you're heading in that direction to fulfill that, then you'll find the money will come, the, the, uh, the, the supernatural abilities will be intact. As long as you're off track with anything else, you don't need this stuff. It's not going to happen for you. So churches are filled with people without purpose, so there's no signs, wonders, and miracles. And a lot of unhappy Christians sit in their chairs simply because they have no purpose. When you've got purpose in life, a God-given purpose, you will go to bed at night happy. You will wake up in the morning saying, this is a new day, and God is going to do something awesome this day. Your purpose in life will, will absolutely consume you, and it will, give you, it will give you satisfaction that nothing else can. I started last Sunday morning, and I talked about some of them things that distract you. I'm going to talk about another couple this morning, maybe just one for time's sake. But I talked about the first one, which was guilt. No, the first one was resentment. And if you ever get into resentment, it will so distract you. And it took me 40 minutes to preach this, but it will distract you from your main purpose that within two, three months or a year, you won't even remember what your purpose is. You'll be distracted by what she said, what she done, who did this to me, why? And, and you'll be so distracted and sort of bitterness and resentment that you will not never in your lifetime fulfill your destiny or your purpose. The other one we got into on Sunday night then was guilt. Because a lot of people are so hooked up on what they said, what they did, who she, what they did to me, and the guilt of the past. And as long as you're holding on to your past, you have no future. The man and woman who will say the, future, the past is past, it is over. I've got a future. Is the man or the woman that will get a hold of their purpose in life and pursue it with a passion. So I want to bring number three to your attention this morning. And I've talked on this subject before, but never under this context. So we need to bring it to you. And this one is called Driven by Fear. Everybody shout fear. Uh, fear comes in many different ways and many different passages of life, and you've got to understand, but it's one of the main ones that will distract you from ever fulfilling your purpose. Sometimes you find out what your purpose is, and fear so grips you that you think you couldn't be asking me, so you'd never do it. But purpose in life from God is the only thing that keeps you, keeps you right. Uh, uh, and one of those things that causes fear is traumatic experiences. Have you ever been through a traumatic experience? And if you get beyond the age of 12, you probably find somewhere in your lifetime you'll have a traumatic experience. And traumatic experiences actually opens the door for the spirit of fear. And if the spirit of fear is there, then you will have difficulties the rest of your life. Every time you go to do something, that fear will enter in again. I prayed with a woman last night, and she said, my daughter uh, fell badly, broke her leg. They had to put two pins in her ankle just to hold the thing together to to form. And I said, well, we pray. She said, no, that's not not the issue. She She said, I don't know what's wrong with my daughter. 
but she said she was a good girl and she said she had one traumatic experience, going to, just going in and getting the operation. And she said when she came out of the anesthetic, came out of the operation, she was a totally different girl altogether. She, she said you couldn't live with her, you couldn't talk to her. There was a total personality change. Her character changed and you wouldn't hardly recognize her. She argues, she snaps, she fights, and she was never like that. And I said, I said, was she not like that before the operation? She said, no, 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 no. Said, I said, I could told you that before you started. I have known people who's went in and got an anesthetic. Whenever you're going into a state of unconsciousness, it opens, your, it opens you up and anything can begin to take a hold at that point. For the born-again believers, we cover ourselves with the blood so it closes all doors and avenues. But if you do not, then you're open. And this girl, you think it's one in a million. No, it happens on a consistent basis. And a spirit of fear enters in and it totally changes you forever. And I want to tell you, look at somebody saying, not me, not me. Well, you just get a hold of us because we, Laura and I deal with these things all the time. Sometimes it's un, unrealistic expectations that's put over you and into you and the thoughts put into your mind by another individual expectations of your life you can never meet up till. Peer pressure comes on and it brings fears into your life. Fears are not going to make it. Fears are going to fall short. Fear of failure is one of them drastic things. If you ever feel once, if you feel in love, if you feel in marriage, if you feel in a relationship, if you feel in business, you know, it's very difficult to get up and start all over again. If you feel in ministry, many people do. I minister to people all the time who feel in ministry. You know people who's feel in ministry, you think, well, I'll just repent and get up. They really never do. Somebody has to coach them. Somebody has to mentor them and get in behind them and every day make a text message and say, come on, you can do it. It's very hard if you've hit failure in any walk of life to get past that again because there's, it, gives, it gives credence and an entrance to the spirit of fear that will block you from your destiny. So better not doing the wrong things in the first place and keep going. And sometimes just growing up. Look at somebody say, grow, no, no, just growing up, just growing up. We need to understand something. That fear, you did not enter this world with fear. You did not. You had to be taught it. Somebody had to introduce it to you. Sometimes they got you and put you in a baby buggy and put you in front of the television and someone went, Row! in front of you in the television. You went, ah! And there it was, it gave entrance. Sometimes it comes through nightmares, but you did not arrive with fear. There's two natural fears you did arrive with, and one is the fear of loud noise. That's why if you scream, a baby goes, ah! There's a, the other one, there's a fear of falling. They have a natural fear of it's a natural instinct in them, but you have no other fears. The rest of them fears were taught to you by your granny, by your... Look at somebody say, thank you very much. <laughs> Those fears were taught to you by who you ran with in the school playground. Those fears were taught to you by your boss and your peers. They were taught to you. And, and, and some has not received this, but some has received this. But when them fears got in, they were roadblocks to your destiny. The devil didn't know who you are and what you are, but he knows you're from heaven. So he's out at an early age to stop you. So he will take whatever, whatever you throw him your way and make it look like a huge mountain so that you never pursue and you never go. And he loves it when you make wrong decisions. Look at somebody say, oh, oh. He absolutely loves it when you make a wrong decision. He puts the clipboard in his hip pocket. He just stands there and says, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because he knows the minute you do it, you have set yourself up and you're roadblocked. And as fast as he gets in after that, he will steer you right off your destiny. Steer you. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Everybody shout the blood of Jesus. See, there's a natural thing in us to help God. Have you ever tried to help God? <laughs> well, I need some money, God. Now, if you were to talk to my mother or you talk to my grandma, my, my uncle has money. God, could you talk to Uncle, uncle Tommy and make him write me a check? Have, have, you ever, have you ever helped God? Look at somebody say, all the time. Have you ever helped God out? Now, God, if you could just, I really need that job, so if you could just, if you could just make them disqualify everybody else and put my name up there. Have you, ever, have you ever helped God? Then you know your future. You must be certain that this is the real job and there's no weapon formed against you in that and it's going away. You must be sure of that then, are you? No, you're not. You're not sure of tomorrow. But you think, ah, that would be good for me. The only person who knows what's good for you is the Lord. But if you're not learned to wait, you'll miss God by a hundred miles, I guarantee you. And when you miss him big enough, bad enough, and ugly enough, the enemy will use it as a roadblock. So your failures will cause you to sit for the rest of your days and you'll 
will never see the miraculous, nor will you finish the destiny that you're called to do. Sometimes if it's taken too long, have you ever told to God you're taking too long? Have you, have you ever stand in front of the microwave and said, hurry up? Have you ever done that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was, I was alive before microwaves were alive, so you had to wait. I remember the television coming on and they advertised in black and white. Anybody here remember black and white televisions? Do you remember, do you remember what? Do you remember what? Oh, you made them. All right. Okay, so, so here's a black and white television. Do you remember the first time the swan cattle came on and it was always an advert night TV and they put it on and they said, they said in less than one minute this cattle will boil. They only put a thimble full of water in that rascal, you know. And then they, had, they put it on and there's the kettle boiling. So we all sat waiting, watching the television to count it down. Then they did seven more adverts and they came back and the kettle was boiling. And you thought, I've got to get one of them swan kettles. Anybody ever been alive at that time? And you took it, there was before the kettles, you had to boil a saucepan of water. So when you wanted your cup of coffee, you had to boil a saucepan. Anybody boil a saucepan of water? You had to boil the saucepan full of water here. Now if you're a really genius and you're making a cup of tea in the sauce, boiling the water for the cup of tea, what you do is you put the tea bags in and you put a boiled egg in so the egg would boil at the same time you get your tea and your boiled egg at the same time. Smart thinking, Joe. So here we go in the old days. And it took you, how long does it take a saucepan of water to boil? Forever! Forever! And then the microwave appeared. The microwave appeared. And you'd push a button and you thought, Kidness, that'll never be done in 30 seconds. You kidding me? That'll take about eight minutes. And you crank that thing up before you know it, the steam's rising out. Woo! <laughs> instant, instant. Do you remember the first you remember the first washing machine that went round? Do you remember the, the older ones? They lifted up and you put everything down in. Do you remember that? Do you remember you got the one with the glass front? I truly remember pulling up the kitchen chair and sat down in front of this thing. I said, hey, Lord, come here quick. There's your blouse. And you saw your blouse going right here. It was like the Grand National Race Course. And there he goes. There's a first sock, first first sock on the outside. Now come down, coming right here. <laughs> I don't know how I got onto that thing. But it's something about, it's something about waiting too long. Because we can't wait on God. God told us you're going to do us, but we can't wait on God, so we push God along, and we help God along, and God just says, well, go for it if you want, but I'm not in it. The Bible's littered with the wreckage of lives who wouldn't wait on God and got it wrong. Esau, for instance, had a tremendous destiny, but blew it. Blew it. He blew the eternal for one minute, temporary fix. Just for a temporary fix. What, what, what's he, what goose he got? You know what he blew it for? A, 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 a five-course meal. In them days, it was what they called a mess of pottage. It was porridge. But in our days, we could call it a feed in McDonald's or you could go up to some restaurant. And he blew it all. He said, if you'll just buy me my dinner, if, if, if you'll take me out to a fancy restaurant, I'll tell you what, I'll sign the deal here and you can have the rest or whatever. I don't even think I'm going to do that. I don't even think I'm ever going to need it. So he took in a moment over a bowl of porridge and said, give me your porridge and I'll give you my destiny. He said, man, alive. No, it happens all the time. People sell the eternal. People sell something that God has promised two years down the road for something sweet right now. And then they never get to see the real purpose in life. They, you just have to go through life like everybody else, sit in the same seats as everybody else and scratch their head and wonder whatever happened because they sold themselves short because they wouldn't wait. I, I've noticed this about the things of God. They never happen in an instant. It takes a while. God brings you through things, but you get there eventually. You get there eventually. But if you get your eyes off your purpose, you'll sell yourself short like a million other people. And there's people and they're driven and they're driven by whatever and then they miss their call. But if you're driven by fear, listen to me, if you're driven by fear, you'll never reach your purpose, never. You'll be afraid to step out. You'll always play it safe. You'll always avoid the risks. And then you'll always go, please don't rock the boat. They'll silence other people in case they rock your boat. But if you're ever going to, if you're ever going to do something for God, then sooner or later you'll have to step up. Sooner or later you'll have to step out and trust God with it. I remember reading somewhere recently that said, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Look at somebody say he's talking to you now. Fear is a self-imposed prison. It will keep you from experiencing all that God has from you, or at least it will seriously limit you. Could you imagine what your life would be today if you had no fear? 
if we, if you were not afraid to go, if you were not afraid, if you were not afraid to stab out, I, I, how far would you go if there was no fear attached to it? What would you not do? What could you not conquer? Where would you not have been? What things would you not have right now if you had not been afraid to step out, step up, or go or do? But that fear seriously limited you. And your fear will ultimately be the one that will teach you, will stop you from reaching your purpose in life. I, I told you this little bit of poem many, many years ago, but it says this. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. But life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Everybody shout, I can. Absolutely, I believe I can. So you've got to, with everything inside of you, face your fears. You've got to face your fears and say, no, 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 this is not going to get me. See, when God came to Moses, Moses' immediate response was, I I can't talk. And in the natural, he had an impediment of speech. He stammered. And God said, I'm going to make you the leader of a nation. He said, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And God said to him, God said to him, don't talk to me like that. You can. If I said you can, you can. And God had to deal with him. And the first thing God dealt was the fear. And when he dealt with the fear, the man got up and led a nation. There's another man called Jeremiah, exactly the same. When God says, come on, son, we're going to send you. I'm going to tell you what to say. He immediately said, I can't, I can't speak. I'm just a child. I'm not well learned. I don't know how to do it. And God says, you will do it. And you'll say what I want you to say, and I'll do the rest. And a man called Gideon, who was hiding amongst all the stuff was going on. And, And when God came to him and said, you're the man, let's go take the nation. He said, I can't because I'm a background. I'm the least in the family. I'm the shortest. I just everybody calls me shorty, and I've got nothing going. And God says, "Stop saying that. Stop saying that." Look at somebody say, "Stop saying that." I'm ugly. I'm no use. I'm a I'm a I'm a misfit. I'm a loser. I'm a nothing. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're exactly what God wants you are, who God needs. He has a purpose. He has a plan. He has a destiny. You will not fall short. You will not miss God as long as you walk with Him, as long as you stay in track. But what, 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 if I'm, what if I'm left on the shelf? You won't be left on the shelf. God has a purpose. He has a time. He has an awesome thing for you to do. Oh, I tell you something. If we could just get you through life, fulfilling his purpose. You would be amazed the places you go, the things you do, and the things that will be accredited to your lives. Doors will fling open across the nations if you'll just follow your purpose and be in and follow your purpose in life. And God had to come to them boys first and speak to them. But when they got rid of their fears, then they began to make a difference everywhere they went. First John 4 and 18 says, there is, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. Fear, and as long as you play games with fear, and as long as you let fear uh, talk to you, and as long as you let dread at night dream, well, I don't know what's going to happen to me. What's going? As long as you let fear talk to you, you will always live in torment. You're opening the door to it. Fear has torment. Fear, fear, uh, the Bible says, he that has fear is not made perfect in love. But continues in the next verse and says, for we love him because he first loves us. That love he's talking about is not some, uh, some human type of fascination about somebody else. It's talking about the love we have for God. If you love God, you realize this first of all, that before you ever fell in love with him, he fell in love with you. And when you have that, re- that revelation, he loves me just as I am. He loves my hair. He loves my eyebrows. He loves the way I think. He loves the way I giggle. Now, he's not keen on the way you get on. They're so negative. And, no, that's not. But when you're doing what's right and you're walking up, man, you bring a smile to God's face. And he has, before you already got here, he had a purpose lined up for you. He has got things lined up for you that are second to none. Let me put it this way. He's things on your plate that nobody else will ever do in their lifetime. They will not do. Now, if you don't do it, God will have to recruit somebody else and somebody else will stand up and fulfill it, but they'll never do it to the way you would do it because you're the master at it, because it was on your purpose in life to fulfill it. I read this just two days ago. A man who fears death will, will never learn to live. A man who fears death will never learn to live. You'll never step out. You'll never go as long as you feel it'll be a failure at the end of it. You've got to rise. There's seven different types of fears that, that will stop you. The number one is the fear of criticism. Fear of criticism, what what they'll say, what the neighbors will think, what the neighbors will do. I wonder what they'll think. 
If you're going to have to have a committee meeting and a board meeting about every decision you make, you're going to have trouble because you'll never get two people on the same, on the same thought we have about, about your destiny. They don't know because they're not you. You know it. You know it now. People, a lot of people will know because they, they hear the things and they'll help you get along. But you've got to stop listening to the negative conversations that goes against you and the criticisms. I remember all the criticisms years ago. I don't have as many of them now because I've learned how to not answer the emails and shut them off. And if I say it's a negative one, I don't even read it anymore. But I remember in the early days listening to the critics and listening to the criticisms of people now when I look back, what did they know about it? But I remember if, if I'd have continued to listen, I would have stopped. I would have stopped. But I remember some crazy people talking to me back then. But what does it matter? And let me tell you, there's the fear of the unknown. If you're going to walk with God, He's going to put you into places of the unknown. And some will look hairy and dangerous, but you've got to say, God is with me. It's going to work. There's the fear of man. And a lot of people operate under that when they'll never go. Just when you think you're up and running and God's supernatural power moves, it'll stop in an instant because something will come in and the fear of man will hit. Feel a failure. And I need to tell you now, in your going forth, you will fail. In your going forth, you will make mistakes. In your going forth, you'll pray for people and some of them will die on you. And if you stop with the ones that die, you'll never go anywhere else. You'll, I'm going to tell you right now, because sometimes God, God just says, Son, there's things that you don't understand, and I can't explain to you right now, so you just trust me. But you're going to have failures. And there's things in you, and everybody else has got three million, and you'll sit there and you're two million in, in, in debt, but yet with all God has told you you're going to be a financial director. And you'll sit there, I don't understand that. You're not meant to understand it. You're meant to do what God says and keep on that direction. But that fear of failure will grip you. Fear of lack. The fear of never having enough. Well, no, God says, I need to give you that hundred pound. And you say, well, all I have is that. And I've given that. I'll have to walk. Oh. Look at somebody say, walk it. Give, obey God. <laughs> well, well, well if, if, if I give that, I'll have nothing. No, 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 no. If you hold on to it, you'll have nothing. If you give it, you'll have everything. It opens a doorway to you that you don't know right now. And God has to teach you these things. He has to show you these things. There's a fear of life. There's a fear of betrayal. What are you going to do when your best friend lets you down? What are you going to do when them closest to you turn on you? They did to the Lord Jesus. You think if it happened to Jesus, it's not going to happen to you. What are you going to do when that that's closest to you, shared all your secrets with, is suddenly running around the country, self sharing their secrets that you told them not? What are you going to do? Let me tell you, if you're going to live fear and that happens to you, you'll never go forward. You've got to deal with these things and look at them in the eye and say, you will not, you will not stop me. There's the fear of death itself. The fear of death. I got over that a long, long time ago. A long time ago. I was driving through Portadown. I, I was driving. I was turning right into West Street. And there's a car pulled out in front of me. And we just missed each other by seconds. And I realized if he had been going any faster, and if I had been going any faster, we would have been into each other. It just would have been a major collision. And the second time I thought, well, if that would have been a band of accident. And, and, and this is where you, I, I was thinking just this day. It was a bright, bright, sunny day. And I thought, if that had been a major incident, major accident, and if I had, a, if I had a died right now in this car, if such was the accident that, that, that hit my head and I had died, I, I, I kind of like had a vision of what would happen. And first of all, I never would have felt the impact because the angels of the Lord would have appeared right in front of me and said, Joe, it's time. And in a second of time, I'd have been lifting out, I'd have looked down and saw the chaos. And looked at them trying to pull me out, but I'd have been gone. Look at somebody say, bye bye, Joe. <laughs> and I'd have been lifted up there, and I'd, I might have felt the lift up for about 10 seconds. After that, the gates of heaven would have opened to me. And I'm driving and trying to concentrate. This is going on with thought, and I thought to myself, in a second of time, whatever death comes, whatever manner it comes, arrives in, it's not, it's not a pain, it's a release that opens the portals of heaven to me. So I got over that a long, long time ago. The worst than the dead bit, because die, you go to heaven. The worst than that is the dying bit, which is the fear of failure. What happens if I join this? What happens if I get in this? What happens if I commit to this and it doesn't work? That's the fear of death. It's another fear of death. And you've got to decide within yourself, are you going to let the fear of death rule you, haunt you? What are you going to do? What is it today that you would have done two years ago, five years ago, and your future, but you're afraid. You're afraid. What would, you, what would it have been? What, what, what is it this morning 
because that one single thing can distract you from your real purpose in God. Real purpose in God. I, I, you know, I, I met some real bojos in my lifetime who had no, absolutely no fear. But then they took drugs and they did crazy things. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a man whose life is consumed and got a passion for Jesus. And they just know, I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do And that stuff consumes you. Most people never go, never go, because fear distracts them. I watched a program during the week. I had no intention of watching it. I actually sat down in the living room. I turned the television down for to make a phone call to, the, to that American family that's just lost the mother, the wife. That, and uh, I sat down to actually make that phone call. And I dialed the first two numbers and, and the, 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 the room lit up a bit because the television screen changed. And I looked and there was something on there. And it was a man from Northern Ireland. It was a BBC too. Did you watch it? Uh, Mr. McAllister. McAllister. I can't remember. I thought I should know him from somewhere. You know him from somewhere? I thought I should know that guy from somewhere. But it came up, and I came up with something like from Belfast to the Congo. Uh, I'm sure if you go on iPlayer or something, you could watch it all over again. So I didn't catch the first half of it. But when I, when I looked at it, I, I thought, my goodness me. Because it's all these tribes that's on there, and here's a man, and it said something about Church of God or something. So I put the phone down a bit, and I turned the volume up a bit. I got distracted. But I watched 30 minutes of a one-hour program and I never moved. I never batted an eyelid. I glued till it. And I watched an, uh, an old guy now called McAllister. I'm sure he has a first name. From Belfast who in the 60s went across to the Congo. And I didn't hear the first of it how God called him but evidently God called him to go to the Congo. And he was only there, and he said revival broke out. The tribes were coming all over us. And then he stopped, and he says, most people, he said to this, he says, you need to watch when you're praying for revival because revival is good. It's what happens after the revival when all hell breaks loose. And after that, they talked about the Congo. The Congo went berserk. Then there, were, there was uh, internal feuds and rats. There was butchering people, but they came after the Christians. They came after the Christians. They were beheading them. They were killing them right, left, and center. And I was fascinated by this story. A guy from Belfast, an old guy now, and they brought him back to go back to see the, the churches that he had raised, the people. Some of them never knew him, but they knew of him, and he went back to see it all. And his family was there. When he was there, he took his wife and him and his children. So his children was on this program. They were talking about their life in their Congo. And they were talking about the day when the enemy came in and were killing, lining people up. They actually walked him out, him and another, another ministry friend, walked them out into the jungle to kill them, separate from his family. They lined the rest of the family up and they put firing squads in front of the rest of them. Lined them all up with one gun each and they took, they took these two pastors, two leaders, out into the bush with machetes and they were going to do them different. And he said, I heard the bang and I turned around and they shot the other missionary guy, in the back as he walked. Actually, I will not, will not tell you much more about this because you need to watch that program. But let me tell you something. When I listen to that, and, and I think to myself, get out of there. Get as fast as you can. And, and, and there was more events happened, and, and uh, God, God evidently kept them alive and his family alive. And they brought in a rescue airplane to bring, a, bring the last 10,000 people who went out. And they came, and they brought the women and children, and, and he, he could have got out. He passed the children up into the airplane and he could have got out. He could have got out. Instead, he said, no, I'll stay. And even the leaders, leaders of the military came to him and said, why don't you, why don't you go? Why don't you go with everybody else? He said, they, they said we, we'll come and put a special jeep or whatever on here to get you out. He says, wait a minute. He says, I'll have to pray about this. I'll have to pray. And they said, God brought us here and God will tell us when to leave. I said, man, alive. What a guy. They're killing, they're butchering. He's already been lined up in an execution squad. The children's lined up. They're now telling their stories about what it was like that day to face the end of a barrel. I never felt, I've never faced the end of a gun. But these guys did. And I listened to them, the price they paid. And they were not afraid. They were not afraid to die. And, and then they did evacuate them all out. They had to get everybody out in a hurry. But when the war settled down, he said to his wife one day, like a little kitchen house in Belfast, he says, I think we need to go back to the Congo. And she says, funny you should say that. I was thinking the same myself. And they got the children in and they said to the kids, we're going to go back. And they said, we're going back with you. And the family that had to run in the midst of death all got the plane and went back in again 
to the purpose and mission God had called them to. It's only purpose in life will cause you to do that. In fact, the people who said, you've got to go, when he said, I've got to pray, they said, you're crazy. You've got to pray, they're, they're killing people. You're crazy. But when you've got purpose in being, when everybody else is running, you'll sit. Oh, when everybody else is sitting, you'll run. You'll hear from God. I'm telling you something. You don't want to miss your purpose in life. Don't miss it because of resentment. Get rid of the bitterness. Listen, there's nobody worth going to hell for. I don't care what they said, what they done. I don't care how close they are. They're not worth going to a lost eternity over. So get over it. Look at somebody say, get over it. And don't let guilt. You can't help what you did, what you said, what you done. It's over. Everybody has a past. But it's over. It's over. So don't let that disturb you. And for goodness sake, don't let the fears grip your life that you'll never step up, you'll never pray with anybody, you'll never go. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. God has so many great things for you. There's a nation that's dying. There's plagues, there's diseases coming on this, on the, on this earth right now. And let me tell you something, our medical science doesn't have the equipment, doesn't have the medicine, doesn't have the money to deal with it. Our hospitals are overflowing. We don't have the staff to deal with it. But what if the church of the living God really came alive? And people seen signs, wonders, and miracles. They will line up outside the doors to get to church on Sunday morning. In fact, they won't go home. You'll have to miss your fish and chips. Somebody will have to stand out for it and bring it in where you are because there'll be so many people. Some of you are called to ministry. Some of you have got signs, wonders, and miracles running on the inside of you. You don't know what to do about it. You don't know where it's going. But it's not your time. But the enemy will do everything to distract you from your moment. He'll do, if he can get you off once, he'll just walk away and leave you because you'll never fulfill your destiny. You'll never put the final nail in. You'll not be able to say like Paul, I ran my race and I finished my course because you'll turn around Saturday and know what life was about. I refuse to get to 175 and say what was life about. <laughs> I refuse to get there. I don't want to get to 70. And turn around and say, well, what am I going to do now? I don't want to do that. I never wanted to get to, to success. I never wanted to get to the top of the heap on my own. We've got to be successful all the gods ask to. But success is a very lonely place if you get there on your own. So that's why you've got to bring a whole bunch of people with you. And then when you get there, you can have a party. Look at somebody say, I'm going to your party. <laughs> We've got to have it. Your success is not by people recognizing you or, 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 or by your qualifications. Your success is on the inside of you right here. It's only a matter of releasing that as you move towards your purpose. So I've said before, it's really nothing to do with your education. It's really nothing to do with your background. Not a thing. I know highly educated people and they're not happy. Highly educated people that commit suicide. Highly educated people that, 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 that change the car every six weeks. And you want one man one time, and he, when it time to come to service the car, he didn't get it serviced. He went in and changed it. Top model every single time. So much money falling out of the air. But no happiness. No happiness. Let me tell you something. Happiness is not in the pursuit of money. Happiness has got nothing to do with your background. It's got everything to do with your purpose. And once you understand your purpose is here, it's God's direction. It won't matter where you lived. It won't matter where you came from. It won't, matter. it won't matter what denomination you're born in. It won't really matter. Because when the day you find out who you really are is the day you step out of that and you step onto God's pathway and then all things begin to happen. And you say, well, what about my hobby? You can have it. In fact, you'll get better at it. You get to cheat because God's on your side. You make a better swing in the club. <laughs> you can do all them things. The Bible says, if you seek me first, then I'll see to it the damn things that's added to you. And the things that people's, people's robbed and steal to get one. And God will see that you've got two in your lifetime. God will get it to you and give it to you. But other people's had centuries and years just to build up to have one for a minute at a time. God will see that you have the best free of charge. As long as you put him first. Are you with me this morning? We'll leave it right there. We'll pick this up. There's no rush in this subject. I thought I was going to preach about three other different things, but no need to. We'll just leave it right there. Fear! I want to help you this morning. I want to deal with it for you. I want to deal with it. If you're here. If you're not and you just came to listen, or you just take a note, fantastic. But just in case fear has a grip of you, then let me deal with it. 
Let me deal with it. I'm anointed to deal with things. Let me deal with that fear. Let me drive it right out for you. Let me do that this morning for you so as you can get back on purpose. What is your distraction? I promise you I would never say it. I'd never call it out loud. I would not offend you. That's not my business. I, you're, you're doing a good enough job of offending yourself. Why should I add to the injuries? No, 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 no. I would never do that. I wouldn't embarrass you. But I will pray. And we'll see God do it. If we, could, if we could get people on track and stay on track, if we could just do that, we'll raise up a people that will shake a nation. Shake a nation. So are you ready this morning? Let's everybody stand at their feet. Father, this morning we thank you for the teaching of your word, for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the challenge because I know you challenge us and you talk to us and you convict us and you get us to think, man, that's what that's all about. But I thank you for the information and the revelation. This morning you've got to have the impartation to deal with us, but God, drive this from us so that we will not be distracted. I pray you take away the abnormal desires. I pray in this arena that you'll fix things for us. Give us our straight our thinking. We're not too far gone. We, we haven't got into something we can't get out of. Oh God, this morning, I pray that you'll put us back on track. Give us a big picture. Let us see beyond where we are right now that this will not hold us. This is, this is simple distraction. We're on track. We're going places. You may God may be breaking relations off you this morning to let you really run your race. If you stayed with that relation, let me tell you something. And If you stay with that relation, you would never get to finish it. Here you are and you're not a chicken anymore. It's all right when you were 14 and you're, when you were 26 and all that stuff and people's making decisions. But he's a little bit older now. He's a little bit older and, and, you're, and, and God's making escapes. He's making ways for you. He closes doors. Oh God, what are you doing? He's looking after you. Because there's some of them things if you stay in there, you'll die in there. And your life will go down hell and you'll never fulfill and you'll never go to sea and you'll never be on another airplane. But if you take the outs that God gives you, say, okay, this is going to hurt, but i got to kiss this goodbye and step out and say, okay, God, here I come. You would be surprised what God will do. Wow. So are you ready for that this morning? All right. If I can help you, let's move up the front. I just want to pray with you real quick because I can almost smell the fish on the, on the plate from here. The coffee is brewing somewhere out there and his name has got my, it's got my name on a mug somewhere. But I want to pray. I just want to deal with that spirit of fear from off your life. I want to cast it down in Jesus' name. I'll tell you again, I will not, I will not embarrass you. I will not. Absolutely. I just want to loose you this morning so that you can run your race and fulfill your destiny. Now, when you're finished here and you go out that door, you'll have to face these things yourself. During the week, things will come. During the month, some stuff will come. It's your life you're dealing with, you see. This is why you can't let other people make decisions for you. This is your life. You only get one shot at it. And if you're going to sit and moan and groan over the past, then you'll never go any further. You're stuck. You're stuck. Ten years from now, you're going to be no different. You're going to be no different. You're just going to be the same thing because you're stuck in your past. I was talking to a man last night, a, 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 a ministry guy. And, and, I, and I said, w uh, 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 asked somebody else was he went home to her. I said, what's he doing now? He said, nothing. He does some little thing. And he got closer to me and he says, you know why? He said, he's stuck in the past. He had a little move going years ago. And all that stuff's died and nobody's even talking like that anymore. And he stayed there. And that's all he talks about, that stuff. And he never moved on with the flow of the Holy Ghost. You can get stuck. You can get stuck in resentment and bitterness. So it failed. Well, pick yourself up and say, well, I'm stepping out of the ashes. Dad. I'm not even going to think about that anymore. I'm out of here. And get up and live the life. So are you ready this morning? I'm going to pray with people that wants to live a life. Oh, a whole family this morning ready to live a life. Are you going to, Father, we just cancel every assignment of the enemy. We don't care how he got in. We don't care what he used. He's a manipulative devil. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cancel the spirit of fear from off your family, from off your house. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have a tremendous destiny. I have seen things in you. I have seen things around you. I've seen your purpose. Purpose takes a lifetime. But we got to do when God says move, we got to move. And usually if we get distracted, that's when we won't move. And you can miss your moments. You can miss your entrance. You can miss your way of escape. But you haven't missed it. It's coming quickly now. 
So I cancel the assignment of the spirit of fear from off your life, your house, in Jesus' name, so that you will run your race. I'm believing with you, little lady. I'm believing with you. You want that whatever happened, whatever was said, whatever was done, it may have hurt, it may have grieved, and, and, the, and sometimes the pain goes so deep, you think, I'll never, get, I'll never get over it. But you will get over it. You will get over it. And you'll launch out, and you'll start, and you'll go. God has an assignment. You're, you, you, I, I see you doing it. I can't say, because if I say things, people will listen. But you, you have mighty things to accomplish in your lifetime. Do not let one or two incidents hold you back from the rest of your life. The enemy is trying to destroy and to kill and to steal from you. Do not allow him. I cancel the assignment of the spirit of fear from of you this day in the name of Jesus that you will run and you will accomplish in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's many people waiting on you coming forth. There's many people waiting on you doing. But do not be halted. Do not be sidetracked about the gainsays or the naysay of individual. Who cares what they think? Who cares what they've done? They don't have to stand beside the Lord and answer one day, but you will. So I'm going to believe Believe right now the spirit of fear that intimidates you will leave you dr instantly in the name of the Lord Jesus and that assignment that's against you will be cancelled so that you can find your way to the next stepping stone you can find your way to run that race and you'll have no problem doing it I believe signs, wonders and miracles will follow your ministry mightily in Jesus name. I believe for you too and I don't think the spirit of fear is there I've even wondered why you're in this prayer line but maybe you think it is and I cancel every work of the enemy Every, every door the enemy would try to open, we slam it closed now so that, firm, so that uh, the only doors that you can see, the only doors that you hear is the ones that's opened by the Holy Ghost himself. We will, we will not allow the spirit, spirit of failure. We will not allow that defeat. We will not allow that to ever enter or come near our lifetime again. Devil will beat you before and will beat you again if necessary. But I cancel that assignment against you now in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Are you ready? You train's well down the track now. And you can't you don't have time to mess. You don't have if, if people want to get on board and people want to get off board, you can't help it. When that train leaves the station and it's your destiny, it's your calling, you get on. There's all types of people gets on your train with you. Halfway down the road, there's the gigglers gets on and then there's the critic criticizers. They get on. There's people, I remember when people we started to run with at the start, they're not even with us anymore. I remember the day we got ordained. They clapped and they cheered and they said, we, we'll leave and we'll come with you. They never did. They never did. I found out that the people left on the first station never made it to the second station. And we kept on going. And there's people got on and there's people got off, but we still stayed on track. Stay on track. See, see beyond the R, see beyond the suffering, see, be, see beyond the challenges. Challenges will always come. The devil will just find another way to halt the train. He'll try another way to steer the train off. Don't, 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 don't. Who gets on the carriage and who gets off the carriage is God's business, not yours. If you just say, I'm at the helm of this thing and I, I, got, I got to get this to the destination at all costs. Get your eyes on your future. Forget about your past. Forget about your present. Get your eyes fixed on where God's doing with you and what God's doing. And who jumps on and who jumps off has nothing to do with you. You're just the ticket master. Click their ticket and say, are you supposed to be here? Are you ready? Father, we're going to believe for supernatural breakthroughs. The discord was born and assigned to make difference in nations. Assigned to have and to be and to do and to make success work on every side. The enemy's doing everything. Everything now. Uh, 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 just, just to cut this thing short, well, he cannot do it. He tried with your health. He tried to get your train slowed down so as you wouldn't even have the energy to do it anymore. But you beat that. You, and you'll beat this as well. And I'm going to believe right now that God, you'll make a way of escape. You'll open doors for her. And this train that she's on will make it to her final destination with a great flurry of activity. I believe the best part of your life's up just ahead of you. And God's going to do mighty things with you in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Oh, you've wrestled a few lions in Ephesus. <laughs> you have wrestled them, all types of devils. And, and, and oh my goodness me. But God has kept you alive in the midst of all the war and the fighting. And sometimes we're all the same, you see. We all, sometimes we'll lose sight of the purpose. In the midst of all the flurry and the activity and all the demands of life and all the chaos and all the pain. Sometimes, sometimes we think this is all there is and we lose sight of the purpose. But you gain the purpose again. And you grab that and you say, what I tell you? 
I, I might have to climb a northern mountain, but I'm going there and I'm going to get. And I say, well, it's people who says that and gets determined. They're the ones that makes the difference. So you're ready. Father, we believe that, that Betty is a difference maker. And I believe you've kept her alive for such a time as this. You've removed bumps and lumps. You've took tumors off this woman. You've, you've kept her heart ticking when it went to stop. We, we've seen signs and miracles in her. Now she demands that she sees them outside of her in the lives of a multitude of other people. So we release her now into her into her purposes, into that pursuit for them. We believe there's no fear will hold her back. I cancel that assignment this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready, Lord? We're going to believe with you. There's no fear will come with us. No fear. You're, you're bold as land. I know sometimes when you sit at home, there's a little fear. Sometimes when you're off, it's a little fear. But you see, when you get out there where the lonely and the isolated and homeless is, that fear leaves you. That's because it's the anointing on you to do it. That's who you are. That's what you're called to do. Get out there. Stay out there, whatever it takes. I believe with you right now that you're a street pastor. You're born to help. You're born to get the flock that has wandered, the wounds that's hurting and wounded and doesn't know how to help. I want to believe that God will put signs, wonders, and miracles onto you so the alcoholic will not be an alcoholic, that the deep wounds on the inside will be healed. I believe right now supernatural toolbox to you in Jesus' name. I believe there's no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I believe when you made up your mind and said, this is the purpose and this is the way we'll go, that you begin to come together and God can mold and shape. It takes time to mold. It takes time to shape. It takes time to bring two visions into one vision and then the anointing of God to refix it. So you've got to give time. You've got to be patient in these things. But I'm going to believe right now that the, out of it will come a tremendous purpose in your life, that God will orchestrate it. He'll put the rain suit and make it happen. So we cancel the spirit of fear, no matter where it comes from or who is it, who's sending it. We will not allow that to interfere. We cancel its assignment and its work this day. In Jesus' name. We will not allow whatever we have, wherever it was, we will not allow us to dictate to our future. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're just at that age when purpose is out there, but we got to pursue it and find it. You will find it. Now you've decided I'm going to do it. It's up to God to show you. So I'm going to believe there's no fear attached to it. I cancel the assignment of the enemy against you. You will run your race and you will finish it in true course in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me pray with you. It's good to see you. If you hadn't come up here, I don't want to down to you directly, I'll tell you that. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's much going on in your life, and it's trying to distract you. Oh, when I was telling about them miracles, it was entering in the inside of you, and you were saying, I'd like to see that. I'd like to do that. I'd like to be in it. That's right, because there's a call in your life. I cancel the assignment of the enemy that's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. There's that that's trying to distract you right now. You have not made a wrong move. You are not off track. You're right center of the will of God right now. It's just you feel the pressure of the work of the enemy against you, but I cancel his assignment this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not die young. You will, you will not die out of time. You will fulfill and run the race that the Lord himself has assigned you. You'll set many people free. Many, many heartbroken people will be loosed because of the trauma they're going through. But you'll arrive just in time to set the captives free. You'll take, I see a vision of hearts in your hand. They're real hearts and they're pumping, but they're broken and they're deformed because life Life has squeezed them and shattered them. I see clots that send them popping out when you pray. I see people and they won't die, but they'll live because God kept you alive. Don't ever think of cutting it short whenever God says we're going places. You have a tremendous life to live. God's in charge and he's doing the work in you, for you and through you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You give her a hold of there. Stand there for 30 seconds and don't walk away. Don't walk away till I tell you, okay? I might come back, I might not, but God started to do something in you. You gotta let him cook you. Look at somebody say, let them cook you. You just let them, let them cook you, let them, let them finish, because some things take a minute. Some things hold on. Some things hold on, cling on for a 30 seconds and refuses to let go. But if you stay on that line, it will go. It will go. I'm telling you now, that hurt will leave you. Just stay there. Just hang on in there. Are you ready? Look at the muscles. My goodness me. Don't you ever think about hugging me with arms like that. I think you could lift tractors in one arm. Now, Father, I just thank you for the determination, sheer determination. I've seen it in you. If you hadn't the determination, you would have sat down 10 years ago. But you've got purpose. You've got determination. You're going to make life work. When, 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 the, when the hassles are there and the mountains are there and there's all stuff going again, you have this determination to make it. Well done. 
Well done. So I'm going to believe for you and with you and through you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that God has started something and he will finish it. And God will do it in such a way that you'll become a sign and a wonder yourself and a marvel to those people who knew you 20 years ago. They'll look and say, look at you now. Look at you now. I'm going to believe God will use you, raise you, and do great things with you, for you and through you in Jesus' name. Are you okay? Put your hand on your stomach right now. I believe with you. This is, this is the final touch. Okay, are you ready now? Now, Father, I just thank you for what you're about to finish, what you're about to accomplish accomplished right now in this life. This, it came in with her, but it's not. she's not going out there with it. She's going out alone now. Just the Holy Ghost in her. I believe right now. I believe right now. I'm, I'm with you, girl. I'm with you. We're believing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're believing right now. We're believing. Just 30 seconds. Stay with me now. Stay with me. All right. All right. The, all them nightmares is about to leave you. They're about to, they're about to leave. It will finish in 10 seconds. I, I'm telling you now. Put your hands in her. Come here, Lord. Put your hands in her right now. now. All right, you want to go to the back of her just. And I believe with you right now. Here we go. This is it. This is your moment of deliverance. This is it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We, we don't even have to know what it is. God knows exactly what it is. But it's leaving. It's leaving. It's leaving. It's leaving. Come here and hold her hand. I right, just pray over her to finish that now. Is that all right? We're, we're almost finished now. God, God will deal with us. Did I get everybody? Did we get everybody? I need to talk to you some more. I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards your actual how to find your purpose. I just have got to put these, get rid of the obstacles before we get there. I may get in there tonight. Who knows? We're doing our best to get in that direction. We're trying that. We're trying fast, but we'll get there. But the main thing, if we can get the obstacles here, you'll have no problem with the rest of it. So where we're at it right now. Now, Father, I just thank you for all these little children. They were good this morning. They were good this morning. It's hard to sit when an old guy's preaching his heart out up there while then you're just youngs. But I thank you for every child that's in here and their purpose and destiny that one day we'll see them in action. But I thank you for what you're doing in houses and homes in these lives. That you didn't bring us here to pat us, you brought us here to challenge us, to shake us loose and get us out of the nest and to straighten us up and keep us straight. And I thank you for what you've started and what you'll, with the ventures that we're going to live, the places we're going to go. Life is for the taking and we have decided to take it this morning. We will not be halted. We will not be held back. I thank you this morning. As we close this meeting, let them go home incident and accident free and we speak a blessing over them now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll see you back here at 6.30 tonight. 6.30 tonight. Okay, okay. 6.30 tonight. Don't go quiet now. Don't go quiet.